Hey, 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 Med School Made Easy. Today we're gonna to discuss the four most common, uh, commonly tested portosystemic shunts that occur in cirrhotic patients. Um, these can be very clinically important and they're all obviously heavily tested. What a portosystemic shunt is, is it's an inappropriate connection between the portal system and the systemic system um, that, that might be there naturally, but then get exploited in the cirrhosis due to your high uh, 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 venous inflow uh, to pressures to your uh, liver due to some sort of um, you know, portal hypertension type setup. So the blood looks for a different way to get back to your systemic circulation besides going through your liver. The first one to talk about is the esophagogastric one. So here you can see your esophagus, your stomach. <clears throat> and so what happens is there's, the, rather than the portal blood returning back inferiorly, uh, back down reaching the portal vein and your splenic vein, it's actually gonna go into these esophageal uh, veins that then go up and back to your uh, systemic uh, vasculature, causing these huge, tortuous esophago these are what lead to variceal bleeds that you hear about in you know, a third of your cirrhotic patients that can be just devastating. It can actually uh, lead to uh, pretty significant mortality risk if they start bleeding. Um, the second one to talk about are your anal rectal ones. So if you look at your, uh, your rectum coming down to your anus, and this would be like your anal verge, um, rather than blood going back up into your uh, 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 portal system is going to come out externally towards the patient's anus and this is then causing uh, anal hemorrhoids or large same deal almost like varices of the patient's anus. This can be important because if a patient comes in with uh, significant hemorrhoid disease and you take them to the OR and you just start chopping through their uh, hemorrhoids thinking it's a run-of-the-mill one, um, this patient could have huge uh, anal uh, varices that cause significant bleeding unlike your run-of-the-mill hemorrhoids. Uh, more importantly, this patient obviously has some degree of uh, cirrhosis or poor, poor hepatic function, meaning their PT and their INR are going to be significantly elevated, and so these things aren't going to uh, uh, coagulate like your run-of-the-mill hemorrhoid patient will. Uh, for that reason, you need to make sure that these anal rectal hemorrhoids aren't caused by cirrhosis and rather they're caused by you know, constipation and, and inflammation and things like that. Uh, next, we're going to talk about your retroperitoneal uh, lumbar plexus veins, and so I'm going to draw the lumbar spine. So what happens is instead of blood going into the patient's abdomen, let's say this is spinous processes, into the patient's abdomen or into the portal circulation, it comes back into these lumbar venous plexus. Um, these can be called the, uh, the retsius uh, 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 lumbar veins. And the reason actually why these are clinically important to talk about is not so much this topic, but moreover, this is how you can get rectal cancer that spreads uh, systemically and doesn't stop in the patient's liver uh, because of these uh, lumbar veins. That's where they're more clinically uh, important. But uh, for second completion, they can be included in this portosystemic shunt and cirrhosis. And then uh, lastly, you can have um, reopening or uh, patency of your umbilical vein. And so if you look at a patient, this is their uh, you know, uh, costal margins and their hips, and you have a little uh, belly button. And most patients, these people will have huge, we call them caput medusae, because they look like the head of medusa, snakes under their skin. And what those actually are are huge veins um, that are caused by this collateralization of flow. Rather than going through the liver, they're going out through the cutaneous veins uh, to get back to the systemic circulation. Um, obviously a big deal. So these are the four most common natural portosystemic shunts that you can see uh, in a patient that then get exploited in cirrhosis to get that blood from the portal system back to the systemic system, avoiding the high pressure uh, uh, liver. So thanks.